Thursday morning. Welcome, kids. Have a little coffee. Have whatever you have to have this morning. Get yourself all fired up because, again, we're going to hop into another lesson of being able to take your pain, all right? Turn it into prayer, all right? Allow favor to come because we're going in a progression here. Allow God to favor you that you can have, again, seasons of aggressive happiness as Sarah did, you know? Uh, I mean, how many times did you think she prayed for a child being 80-some years old <laughs> until the Lord El Shaddai showed up? How many times do you think she prayed, you know? You know, bearing all her life, never having a miscarriage or whatever, just bearing, just couldn't, couldn't conceive a child. And then all of a sudden, God comes on the scene, you know? And then her statement, you know, the Lord has made me laugh. And those who hear will laugh with me. In other words, those I tell the testimony to, they're going to chuckle, they're going to holler, they're going to laugh, they're going to say, girl, you got to be kidding me. That's impossible. No, not with God. It's not. We go this morning to the book of Daniel. All right, come on, go with me, Daniel chapter 6. Okay, this involves Daniel's commitment to prayer, all right, as we all should be. Uh, Daniel prayed three times a day because Daniel found out that uh, what Jeremiah had prophesied about Israel being in bondage for 70 years, you know, this time is butt up. We got to get out of here. We got to prepare ourselves to go. So he's seeking the Lord God for answers. He's talking, you know, he's wanting to know if this is right now, if, if we should be doing this, whatever we need to be doing, your word says 70 years. 70 years is up. <laughs> we got to get out of here, all right? We don't want to be here for another 70 years because we're ignoring what you're saying. And so he was intensely praying every day, and these guys that didn't like him, how many of you know what Jesus said? You know, people that, you know, that as we read earlier, that persecute you or whatever, you know, to pray for him, all right? And I'm sure Daniel was probably in that lion's den praying for him that night. You know, but this is, this is the one I want you to see. This is the king, King Darius, all right? And we, get, we begin this in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 14, because Darius knows that these guys have did this out of some form of malice or whatever. He knows they done got together. They don't like Daniel, you know? And so look at Darius. It says, you know, they had made the petition uh, and whatever, and the king had to sign it. And it said, then the king... Uh, when he heard these words, he was so displeased with himself, and he set his heart to on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. In other words, here's a pain of love showing you. Here's a love for Daniel, and the pain of what's about to happen and what these guys are doing, that is set on him, you know, and he's going like, you guys are wrong. He's trying to deliver it. These guys are sticking to the law. <laughs> these guys are holding on to the law. They're going like, no, you can't break your word. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, no, oh, no, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree, no statute which the king established may be changed. They just throwing it right back on him. You can't change this. All right. And so then the king commanded and they brought Daniel, cast him into the den of the lions. All right. And now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thy service continually, he will deliver thee. Remember what I said about a trail of words? You got to watch the words that come out of your mouth because they leave a trail, all right? And you're going to be able to go back to that trail. You're going to be able to follow that trail back to, to the original, all right, in your life. If you ever said this or said that or said this, I'm telling you, you know, well, I'll take that curse. Well, I, and then you can go all the way back to how you're living like this and all the way back to that. You got to watch how you say things. And it says, the stone was born and laid upon the mouth of the den, and, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that uh, the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went. Now, here's a pain of love. This is what I'm talking about. Taking your prayer, taking your pain, turning it into prayer. Instead of taking your pain and turning it into worry. All right, because worry is always about the future. Don't take your pain and turn it into worry. Take your pain and turn it into prayer. Then the king went into his, to his palace and he passed the night doing what? Fasting. Say what? Who, who did he learn this from? <laughs> the one who he has this love for. He, he, he passed it fasting and neither were instruments of music brought before him and sleep went away from it. In other words, this guy's there. He's concerned about Daniel all night long. God is reading every one of his thoughts. Every one of his thoughts. God is reading them about, about my servant Daniel. And it says, Then the king arose early in the morning, 
went in haste into the lion, to the den of lions. And when he came in, why would he, why would he go there if he didn't have any pain of love for Daniel? If he wasn't concerned about Daniel? Hmm? He wouldn't have gone there at all. He'd have been, he'd have been sleeping and said, y'all take his bones up if any left and go bury him somewhere. No, 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 no. He's, he's going there. Why? Because of what he said. And he believed what he said. And he knew the God of Daniel. He knew God had worked with Daniel through Nebuchadnezzar's uh, ministry. He knew that. Okay. And it says this. He rose early and went there. When he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And, and unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the who? The living God. Remember what Peter said about Jesus? You're the son of the living God. Amen. Is, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the, from the lions? Is God able, Daniel? I mean, you're down there. Here, let, let me hear you say something, boy. <laughs> and Daniel said unto the king, can you imagine what the king and these guys that were with the king, because the king weren't there by himself. His whole, you know, armor bearers and everybody's there with him. When Daniel spoke up, I bet you every ear in that place, every ear in that place, but turn around to the other side. What? A man lived in the den of lions? What? O king, live forever. May God, my God have sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions, the mouths of the lions, lions mouths, that they may not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. This is a powerful thing here. This prayer Okay, and I'm sure Daniel was in there praying. He wasn't in there running around dancing that night and jumping up and down. I'm sure he was sitting over there looking at those lines and praying to the Lord God. And the Lord God was sitting there showing him, listen, I got an angel's got his hand here. And none, now one of them going to come over here and touch you. All right. Then the king, what was he? The king was what? What was he? He was exceeding glad. His, his season, his pain turned into prayer. Is this guy is fasting before the Lord? That means I don't want nothing. I'll, and and then guess what? Here comes here comes favor, and here comes again. Here comes again the season of what aggressive happiness. It says then was the king exceedingly glad for him. And look what happened in his exceeding gladness. <laughs> he commanded that Daniel should they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. And no man of hurt was found on him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, uh-oh. And the king commanded, uh-oh. Because see, if they were innocent, then, they, then those who accused had to be guilty. Uh-oh. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had, which had accused Daniel, and they cast them down into the den of the lions. Them, all right? So you got to watch your trail of words because see, they lied about Daniel. And that trail of words led right on back to them. All right, to thy household, them, thou children, and thou wives, the whole families, all of them, perish because of the words of these guys. But Daniel came out because pain was turned into prayer. Prayer was turned into favor. Favor was turned into a season of aggressive happiness in the end. God bless you. We'll see you here tomorrow morning on Daily Bread.